Broadway favorite Mary Michael Patterson is starring as Meg Jerry in the touring production of Andrew Lloyd Webber's Love Never Dies, The Phantom Returns. Patterson recently popped into the Broadway.com studio to chat about playing the formidable role and why this Phantom of the Opera sequel is a must-see for theatergoers across the country. Mary Michael, we're so excited to have you. Thank, Thank you. you so much for joining us. I really want to dive in, learn about everything I can about Love Never Dies. Uh, but first of all, how excited were you to find out that you'd be playing Meg and do the North American premiere of this show? I was very, very excited. Yeah, I, uh, I did Phantom here in New York for right. a little while. And when I got the audition, I was a little bit, you know, confused. Mm -hmm. uh, but I was excited because it's such a different... Uh, kind of role yeah. and she really gets to go on a crazy journey um, and express all kinds of emotions and sing all kinds of songs and I was really really excited about it and the more I got to know it and the more I went in for the team it felt like a really good fit so yeah. uh, it's exciting to get to do it. I was gonna say you joined the Broadway production mm -hmm. of the Phantom of the Opera like in the midst of its 25th year I believe it was yeah. celebrating right? How is playing Christine for a long time and then to sort of switch over into the head of Meg how, how has that process been yeah. for you? They're so different I mean especially in, in Love Never Dies world mm -hmm. you know we get to look more closely at the characters and uh, Meg Giri in Love Never Dies is very different than Meg Giri in the original um, but it's it's really cool because it f it's still the same world, you know, it's still right. the same vocabulary and the same uh, style and mm -hmm. uh, musical elements are, are very similar in a lot of ways. So it's a fun challenge and it's not something that I normally get to do. I do a lot of, you know, stand and sing and, <laughs> right. you know, park right. and bark kind of roles and uh, Meg is very different. So she gets to dance a lot, uh, which is something I was excited to do and it's a little bit of a darker yeah. Uh, role, which is fun. Well, so I, and I want to get into that with you, but first, <laughs> for anyone who isn't familiar with Love Never Dies, mm -hmm. where do we pick up with Meg when we get started in this show? Yeah, so it's 1907. Um, ten years have gone by since we've seen them uh, at the end of Phantom. Right. And she is in Coney Island, and she is the lead showgirl, essentially, at um, the Phantom's vaudeville stage, mm -hmm. uh, essentially. And... Um, Lots of different musical acts are performing, but she is the sort of head of that right. team. Uh, so she's, you know, she's a showgirl. She gets to uh, do a lot of really fun burlesque style numbers. Yeah. And that's kind of, you know, where she is. And then when Christine comes, you know, they get to see each other, which she's so excited about. And she hasn't seen her in 10 years. And they were the best of friends right. dancing together in the core. It's really exciting. Yeah. To do. And at the end of Phantom, if I remember correctly, mm -hmm. um, Meg finds the Phantom's mask yes. on his chair. So she's so she's excited to have followed him here to Coney Island, Absolutely. right? And to be yeah. performing. And what's an, an asset of Meg's or uh, a quality of hers that in her maturing growth over those 10 years that you really admire about this character? She's really resilient. She puts up with a lot um, and she, she does it in, in good spirit a lot mm -hmm. of the time, you know, and she... I think the Phantom is sort of a fatherly figure to her in a, in a lot of ways, and she she really wants to please him and, and do these numbers that he's written for her uh, as best as she can. And so it's a really sort of um, heartwarming story about how we work hard for our mentors mm. and we, we do certain things for teachers right. because we so desperately want to please them. And I think that's a really admirable quality and sometimes doesn't serve her. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> right. it, it is still a lovely side of her. She's really dedicated and, and loving yeah. toward him and what he's created. So, And I certainly don't want to give anything away. Um, but that's Meg, great. as you mentioned, does have a very dark journey that mm -hmm. she goes. What did you make of all of that as you were reading it and getting familiar of that? Were you were you surprised? Did it sort of make sense for you that this was the character's journey? Or I think... At first, I was very surprised, mm -hmm. but then the more I spent time with it and, and with the amazing direction of Simon Phillips and, and sort of what we've talked about together in, in uh, our rehearsal process, it's, it's a story that we hear a lot, right? It's a story that makes sense, you know, right. and uh, this sort of she's been tossed aside and t one too many times mm -hmm. and what that ends up creating in um, some animosity and some jealousy and, and yeah. you know, we've seen that in stories time and time again. So it's it's fun to get to play that. Um, right. It's a familiar story, but it's it's uh, it's very deeply uh, examined. Like it's a really beautiful look at what people will do for attention, love, 
you know, right, all those right. things. So. And since you've spent so much time in the head of Christine, mm -hmm. and now you're getting to spend the time in the head of Meg, do you have a different appreciation for those characters on the other ends of those things? Or is it hard to switch to, now I have to be super jealous of this? Right. Is that, is that I, a challenging I or fun? It's, it's very fun, yeah. Because I, because I spent so, so long singing that music and, and being in her head, She's such a sweet character, but she's always at the center of it. You know, mm -hmm. everything happens to Christine in the original and in Love Never Dies, really. She's sort of what brings everyone together. And yeah. so it's sort of this, she's almost like a magnet for the story. Um, and it's fun to get to play a character that's more, I don't want to say more active, but a little bit more. Yeah. There's more that she can kind of go through. Right. Uh, it's less things happening to her and more she is, you know, driving the, right. the story. Right, and as Christine in Phantom, you have to spend so much time Essentially, not alone, but only with like one other person. Totally, Whatever, you would leave the stage just before everyone yep. else would come onto the stage. And even in like dressing rooms, you know, you're you're on the other side of the stage in right. the New York uh, theater in the Majestic. So you you only really see the Phantom and yeah. Raoul, and that's who you see on stage. And so it, it is very isolating. Mm -hmm. um, and Meg in Love Never Dies is totally different. She gets to do all these big, uh, fun yeah. production numbers and see the ensemble. She's and part of this troupe. Yeah, yeah and spend yeah. a lot of time with Madame Giry and. Um, and even the Phantom, so it's it's really neat. It's much more. It feels more in inclusive. Right. Yeah. I think I've read somewhere that your your favorite moment in the Phantom of the Opera was the Don Juan sequence, oh, right? Yes. Like the the uh, the opera within the opera. Mm -hmm. Is there a moment in this show that you're really excited for people to see that it can involve you? It doesn't have to. But is there a uh, a moment oh, gosh, that you're so super many. excited for people? I mean, the opening of Love Never Dies is it takes my breath away. Mm -hmm. And I've seen it, you know, I saw it all through tech. I would sit in the house and watch it. But hearing the orchestra do what they're doing and then against that see what the actors are doing, it's it's one of those moments that I don't think people will ever forget theatrically. Yeah. Um, and then I think also the final scene, which I will not give anything <laughs> away. Right. But it's such a it's such a the stakes are so high and it's um, beautifully beautifully played by everyone in the cast. And so I think that they'll leave feeling uh, Satisfied by yeah, that. <laughs> right. When audiences across the country come out to see Love Never Dies, The Phantom Returns, mm -hmm. what kind of a night are they in for? What kind of experience are they going to have at that theater? Oh, it is two and a half hours of romance and in the best way. Not in a sort of sappy way and uh, not in a surface level way, but it's really a close examination at love. And I think it's really a needed piece of theater right now because it sort of reminds you, yeah. it leaves you with this beautiful thing of at the center of it all we should just be loving one another. Right. And for all of our flaws and faults and differences, which I think is just such a beautiful message and yeah. I think it will reach people all across the country in different ways, but I think it's something that everyone understands at their totally. core. Um, and spending a night with the freaks. Yes, I mean, exactly. Guess, and it's dark and yeah. um, it's funny. I mean, there are funny elements. And so I think they're going to get a little bit of it all. And yeah. I'm excited for people to get to see it. They're in for a great treat. Well, yeah. thank you so much for joining us. Thank Make you. sure you go see <laughs> Love Never Dies, The Phantom Returns with Mary Michael Patterson and their whole incredible cast. Tickets are on sale. Thank you so much again, Mary thank Michael. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Good luck.